Good evening. The relationship between Christianity and politics is a historically complex subject and a frequent source of disagreement throughout the history of Christianity. It gets even more complicated when discussing the relationship between the state and the church. There has always been mistrust globally between the two institutions historically. This debate was reignited over the Easter period when the Kampala Diocese Archbishop Cyprian Luanga, speaking on Good Friday, said the government had recruited the members of the church to spy on him. The Archbishop didn't mince his words during the Easter homily when he said an anonymous scholar had informed him that the state thinks he's conspiring to overthrow the government. The senior Catholic cleric has been known to be very critical of government for its excesses. Tonight, we delve into the uneasy relationship between the church and the state. And we ask whether the state is preying on the church. On the spot night is Colonel Shaban Bantariza, the deputy director of the Uganda Media Center, David Pulkol, a political analyst and former director general of external security organization, Ibrahim Semuju Nganda, Kira Municipality MP, and Reverend Dr. Andrew Omona, head of foundation studies at Uganda Christian University. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to the show. You're on the spot tonight. Let me begin with Colonel Shaban Bantariza. Yeah, because of, uh, this, the, of the historical perspective. In the 80s, in Fort Porto, we would, also, we would always hear a young gorilla leader that would always sneak in the Kigo, in the diocesan offices of Virika Catholic Church under the leadership of Bishop Delet, Bishop Serapio Magambo. And I'm talking about Yoweri Museveni meeting Serapio Magambo, was a bishop, but then was a gorilla leader, and that they could have meetings. And that the church then, I'm told, was organizing to help the gorilla leaders in the bush to top of the government of Obote. What's that they hear, say? I need to verify it, but if it took place, I wouldn't deny it straight away because the the the, the guerrilla uh, uh, the, the struggle that time uh, to 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 liberate Uganda involved all manner of people, all classes of people, all categories of people, and if the Bishop of Fort Porto was part of that movement to liberate Uganda, I wouldn't be surprised. Did I am you, saying, I am didn't saying, you, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, as exactly gorilla way. leaders, yes. as bush war fighters, yes. involve church leaders or religious leaders in your struggle to topple an elected government? At, uh, at the strategic level, that is possible. It was possibly done, but by that time, I wasn't certainly at the strategic level and I wouldn't be privy to who met who in the mobilization. You but what I also know. The, you, you moved into the ranks yes. to become a. A colonel. Yes, but you don't to move become back. even a spokesperson you don't even of, the, of the UPDF. You don't move backwards. You move forward. Yes, but you have to look back what and, happened. And that's what I'm saying. That I, I know we involved everybody, teachers, uh, clerics, everybody who was willing to, because it was not a clandestine organization. It was not a clandestine movement. By especially by the time. The, the NRA went to western region, Fort Potro, to the mountains. It, no, it was no longer clandestine. It was known. The, 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 the government knew we were there. So we were really, we, ha, we had by that time, got into the conventional, uh, at the conventional level of fighting. And therefore, the, 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 there was no hiding whether this one is in or that one is not so in. So let me <coughs> put it like this. Yes. They know what they are doing if they are working alongside the NRM government. I mean the church leaders. Yes. They do not know what they are doing when they criticize you. No, no. You know what you are doing, but you also must know the consequence. You see, when Jesus Christ, whom the leaders of the church follow, said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. He knew the two kingdoms are not always, uh, are not always mixable comfortably. Like you started uh, uh, in your introduction. Okay? So give, matter, give things of God to God, those of, of Caesar to Caesar. But the two kingdoms belong to the same God. The kingdom of heaven belongs to God. The kingdom of, of, of Caesar belongs to God because we all belong to God. And that's why they say in the, even in the Bible that all power comes from God. So it's a question of being able to know what risks am I undertaking if I am supporting Caesar 
to this level or beyond that level. Reverend Dr. Mona, has yes. the church in Uganda been used by the state to continue the longevity of the NRM in power? And now when you wake up and say, look, you have to check the excesses when you want to do your role as a church, you are being criticized. And yet, you, in the past, you have accepted to be used. Yeah, I, I can't say yes or no. Why wouldn't um, you? Uh, but um, uh, if you look at um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the country, Uganda, the church has been involved in the political life of the, of the country right from the beginning, right from the coming of the colonialists. And over the years, the church has been active in the affairs of the country. And, and, and um, I get perturbed when I hear that um, the church will not involve in the affairs of politics. One, because these are human beings, these are Ugandans. They are first Ugandans before they became church leaders. And, 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 and therefore, if they participate or they involve themselves in politics and supported some political parties, either overtly or otherwise, um, um, you can't deny. But uh, whenever what, what, there are some when excesses... There, when a, a man with repeatable credentials says that men in the church have been recruited to spy on him, mm -hmm. do you find that plausible? Yes or no. Yes, in the sense that um, over the years, I am teacher, I teach, I teach uh, uh, students of all kinds, I teach theology, I teach other students. And, and there are instances where you see that there are people who you know uh, are reporters, but of course you can't say no, they are here. I know my colleagues who are, who are, who are quoting uh, the, the state openly. Uh, to the extent that if you go to a function, you see the president coming, you see the excitement in some of them. And when you are in your other private discussions... Uh, what, what do you mean the excitement, Dr. Mona? Because... Yeah, what, the, what the, excitement, the, excitement, the excitement in a way of support. And, and, and uh, when it comes to like uh, times of... Are you campaign, suggesting people in the church should not support a political leader? No, I did not say that. So they sh are you saying they shouldn't show even the excitement when that leader comes? Um, uh, what, what I'm saying is uh, the open, openly involvement of uh, church leaders in partisan politics. And, and uh, in, in whatever we are doing, whenever a country is going wrong, of course, which is uh, an activity of the leaders, church leaders talk. And they have to speak okay. at uh, whatever time. David, Mr. David Polkol, I have seen, let me give you two scenarios. When a Reverend Lokodo, a brother from the East, talks, from Karamoja, yes, from, from Karamoja, from Kabong, mm -hmm. speaks on behalf of the government, on behalf of the NRM, he's lauded. When Reverend uh, Gaetano from Kabale speaks, he's criticized. And yet all of them are men of the church. So uh, what do you pick from those two? That when one speaks, he doesn't know what he's doing. When another speaks, he knows what he's saying. And they are all both men in the church. I think, Kamara, let's, let's pivot this discussion within the background that uh, recently, during the age limit debate, the church in unison, the leadership of the church in the interreligious council, came with a strongly worded statement in a long time and stood with the, in my view, with the majority of the population from the SEDU uh, reports, uh, which percentage was against lifting the age limit, which mm -hmm. percentage was for lifting. Again, as the, in parla inside parliament, there were 317, the majority who were in favor of lifting, and the population was this side. So when the, the interreligious council came out so vocal and strong and uh, like they are seeing certain excesses, like he said, when there are excesses committed, the voice of reason, the church, the voice of the voiceless is bound to say something. Mm -hmm. And in this case, they said something. Now, uh, this, what is happening now should be seen in that context. 
and also should be seen in the context of the referendum that is coming. And so we need to analyze these things deeper. But let me come to the questions you asked specifically. Father, Reverend Father Lokodo is uh, one of those who has been excommunicated from the church. He's not a practicing priest, defrogged. Okay? Uh, you have uh, those uh, who are still practicing, okay? Like Father Gaetano, Gaetano for example, yes. uh, and so forth. So let's not equate the two. There are those who are excused and released by the church for other reasons and therefore are free to, you understand. And then there are those who are inside the church who are uh, shepherding the sheep, if you like, uh, the flock and, uh, of the church. And therefore, these are people made in God's image. And therefore, they should be able to speak out mm -hmm. if their human rights, for example, are violated or if their rights, interests and so forth are being marginalized. So the, the church should add its voice. So, so for me, it's okay. Now, you're saying that it looks like government louds only those who are towing its line, like mm -hmm. Father Lokodo, and then criticizes those who do not tow its line. So uh, uh, why should it be? I think you're right in posing those questions. Does the government want the entire body of the church to bring the church and its leadership, the religious, under its armpits, so that when, they, when the government says jump, you, they must jump. How high, sir? When they say sit down, how low, sir? Is that what the, 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 the government wants of the religious leaders? And would it serve the country if the, the watchmen, okay, get compromised? And then uh, the thief comes, like there have been many, mm -hmm. stealing in the treasury. Uh, because our treasury is not fumigated. They are thieves. They are, they are weevils. Okay, now even in the police, they are being weevils. So you need a fumigation uh, machine. There are people who are playing with, the, with passwords in the, in the treasury to steal mm. money. You remember the, the Prime Minister's saga, the OPM saga, and so forth. So there are a lot of thieves. So shouldn't the church speak if there are these excesses? For example, uh, recently on the Constitution. So I think what I want to see to, to ask citizens is that let's approach this discussion very soberly. Let's listen to what the church leaders are saying. And let's listen to what our government leaders are saying. So that then citizens must now find a way to, to, to see what can we do in all this. Because it's our country. Okay. Uh, and uh, when you harass the, their church leaders, like uh, it's not common for a head of a Catholic church to voice the concern he's voicing now. He just, just doesn't wake up and take water like this and then start dreaming that thing. No. Okay, and that's the question I want to put we to Ibrahim. We should go there. I Ibrahim, uh, Honorable Ibrahim Mangane. What, what do you make of those allegations? The, the, the homily the Archbishop gave, and, and then he said he had it that people working in the church had been recruited to spy on him. And in fact, a non scholar called him and telling him, you know what, government is aware you're trying to overthrow the state. Such a, a big statement by somebody with a, a name that is respectful. <clears throat> I think, the, first of all, this is not the first time that the Archbishop is complaining and is revealing to the, to the country um, information regarding those kind of accusations. I have written many articles about the church in Uganda. Um, they have spoken. I have been saying they have not done enough. The doctor will tell us. During the remove of the attempt to remove the term limits in Malawi, in Zambia, the church actually was leading. They were the ones holding demonstrations and inviting the, the, the population to join. There was an attempt during Moe's time in Kenya for the church to do much more than what the church has done in Uganda. In Uganda, they have only spoken. They haven't mobilized like you saw in those countries I have mentioned. Um, so the, <coughs> the, the archbishop, it's, it's not just about the, um, in addition to what the, the Honorable Prokol has said, the church has disagreed with the president on many other issues, including issues of land. But the way Mr. Seven works is that uh, he would want to gain control of all the very strong institutions, whether they are state or they are non-state uh, institutions. And the moment he fails, 
he will now want to undermine them either from within or from without. I saw that happen with the Uganda Kingdom, uh, hiring uh, members of the real family to come and disown the Kabaka. And then we went into a whole saga that circle. So the attempt was that if I can't gain control of the Uganda Kingdom, I must not allow it to normally function. And I think the Catholic Church is a very strong institution that you will not easily push over. But there will be attempts. And I think uh, by the time the Archbishop, uh, as the way you are describing the Archbishop, by the time he, he came out, I think the matter was much more than bad mouthing some fellows writing reports. The, 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 I mean, they had reached a level of too much interference that you now want to recruit to Kiraji because you see, government can have informers. But someone who is armed by the state is no longer an ordinary person just looking for information to file. It means now they are recruiting within the church. And, and arming them. Yes, and, and you don't know why and what you'll hear. Because you see, the moment you are under the institution of the church, the assumption is that you are serving the church. But if you are armed, uh, the church will begin doubting whether you are serving the church or you are, you are serving the, gov the sitting government. And I think for me, that, that's, that's how I understood the Archbishop's message, that this is too much. Um, because I don't think the Archbishop would be scared of people filing reports. But he would be uncomfortable with serving with the same people who are, uh, whose hearts are elsewhere. I think that, that that's what prompted him to say so. Because I think in the past I have, I, I have gone to Rubaga to attend uh, one of the services and they had made similar remarks that he was trying to undermine the government, wanted the government removed. Yeah, for me, it worries me. But all the governments, uh, the moment the government overstays, uh, the governments of strong people, um, by the time they leave, they have weakened every single institution. And that's how uh, Africans say it's corrupts. Because in an attempt to overstay in power, they will make sure that every strong institution is broken down. And that's why when said by leaves Somalia, even today we are still having our soldiers dying in Somalia. Um, you saw what happened in, in Libya. Uh, Egypt didn't collapse completely because the military was a very strong institution, to, so it was able to, uh, to grab power for itself. So that, that's what we're experiencing now. The, I saw in Uganda when the prison was uh, installing uh, cultural leaders even where they didn't exist. Okay. Uh, when, when Achibusa Luanga said such words and, and came out to speak out because I'm sure uh, they worried, I mean, it, it pained him. With, uh, with, he's a man of substance. He's a leader in the church. I think that shows, gives a stain on the government of Uganda. If you were like used to, to speak for the Ministry of Defense, if you were to speak for Uganda, how would you now put the image better? Because it is I stained. Think, I think, I think from the Archbishop's statements, which he said on the pulpit, we need to break them down and ask questions. What is the Archbishop's worry, for example? Is it that his priests have been recruited by the state? Is it that, the, like he said, the priests that he has suspended or interdicted from administering sacraments have now turned to the state and therefore may become a rebel as well there? Is it that the person who, and the anonymous caller who called him is credible enough to have been relaying accurate intelligence information? Is it that the Archbishop is worried that he's a target of government, of the state, not government, of the state, therefore he's insecure? Or is it that he, now he's going to be even insecure from non-state actors? Those are important questions to ask. Start from his worry <coughs> being a target of the state. But that one is not verified because he got information or a call from an anonymous caller, not even Shaban, who had gone to the confession box to confess his sins and then whisper to the Archbishop, your grace, you are in danger. I am a, I am a servant of the state and there they are, they are plans to harm or injure you. You know, it's an anonymous caller. Now, this, this discussion here, 
we can only delve into speculation because we don't even know the person who called the archbishop. We don't know his credibility. We don't know his information. We know the credibility of, we, the, archbishop, we don't, uh, yes, of the archbishop. Correct. But and when he see, stands to speak, no, 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 no. His, his words have weight. Those are not his words. They are the words of his informer, the one who called him. Now, that, that person can be an impersonator, can be an imposter, can be anyone. You remember 1992? Uh, 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 February, I think, 3rd, right? The cardinal was hi literally hijacked, Cardinal Wama, in his house. Some terrorists got there, and for 20 days, the man was, was a hostage until the state somehow used its means available to it, and he was restored. Cardinal Wama, he's still alive. Now, that was a serious threat. And it was not CSA. It was not information from some somebody. Who so unless and then, in fact for some of us, when we heard the Archbishop made those pronouncements, we thought they were important pronouncements, but perhaps which he should have shared with the strategic consumer of intelligence. Because literally he was choosing the president that the people he has recruited and even from the church are, are, are now spying for him, spying on the no, bishop. No, but you see, the, the, the point okay. the Shaban misses is that he picks one statement. I have severally watched and, 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 and listened to the statement the Archbishop made first. He says CMY, ESO, and the police are telling lies. And also actually, he even included also. Mm -hmm. He didn't say a few individuals, he says these institutions are telling lies. He then said they are recruiting his priest and he gave an example. They go to attend a funeral of, of one of them and then such men appear and they are demanding to enter his bedroom because they want to recover their gun. And then he speaks about the one who called him and, and said uh, you want to remove government. These were several examples <coughs> Um, Actually, th those are the questions I said we should be asking and we need to concentrate on and separate each because each constitutes a question in its own. Mm -hmm. Because it, the, even the priest who is right are dead, okay, and then some, uh, some state actors go to, to, to recover a rifle. We need to ask in his house. In his house. Uh, uh, well, well, because, because first of all, you know, David, Ugandans David, are free are to be Are we reached a point where this government or the state before it became a state, it was a guerrilla movement that used mm -hmm. religious leaders to, to, to advance their means. Now they are realizing that, okay, the same means we used can actually be used against us. Well, there could be that concern, but I think uh, let's, let's, let's get back to if it is true that a reverend priest dies and then is given as example, as they were considering burying him or during the burial, then some intelligence people, or unknown people, or security people, unidentified people, come demanding to enter his room to check mm -hmm. of the late and to recover government property. And then they actually, when the church says no, they insist and they actually go. And from the story, they must have recovered their gun. So everybody, including the head of that church, says, what? You mean now it has reached this, that uh, we are sitting here with comrades, with colleagues, giving mass and doing everything. Kumbe, some people <coughs> here have guns, some, some priests here but, have but, guns. But, 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 and then, and then now you ask for a former because head of external listen, security. A, 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 look, a, chief. A guy who understands espionage, why would you be so, sh so shocked? No, I'm shocked. Because be that's your game. Listen, I'm shocked that because, was your game. because I'm shocked because... Uh, to do things in such a clumsy way is not intelligence. That you blow your cover, you expose people, you 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 you, you spoil actually even for even if you are, even if it was meant for anything, because then they have done a very clumsy job. And secondly, arming a priest inside the monastery in the mission. And is the only armed one. Or there could be many others. That's why the, the bishop is complaining. Because if the bishop now goes to recruit soldiers now, military men, will he be arrested? Now, if you come to recruit from the church, shouldn't the head of the church speak out 
and said, stop this. This is totally not acceptable. So and now, if you recruit people, but arming them, it's totally unacceptable. Doctor, because, Doctor because that arm <coughs> is a monopoly <coughs> of UPDF stores, is a monopoly of, of police stores, is a monopoly of intelligence organizations. You don't go to a shop and buy it. Now, if you find such assets in unauthorized hands, somebody must answer. Who gave this priest a gun? Dr. So Mona, the, the, therefore, yes. the president ought to take this very concern. If he, within this one week, he does not get to the bottom of this, he must summon all his security agencies, heads, and get to the bottom of this. He should call the clergy and assure them, in my view, because this is a serious matter. Because if you get this gun now with a Karimujong warrior, you, you, you arrest him, you take him to a court martial. Now, who is this who's arming people in the monastery, in, in the mission? Do, Dr. Mona. For what purpose? It, do, Dr. Mona. To just, do what with I, this gun? Is, if it is true, uh -huh. some people have been recruited uh -huh. uh, working for the state uh, overtly, uh -huh. covertly, uh -huh. then you are to blame as church leaders, as religious leaders, because you have allowed to be compromised. Uh, not, 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 not quite, uh, because um, a clergy is a human being. A human being has the right to make decision. You may recruit at the recruitment level. Somebody proves that he is coming to serve. But along the way, uh, things are dangled before him or her. And, and you, get, you get somebody making his own decision. And at times you never know. Some come to church not because they want to serve, but maybe, as, as the Archbishop said, they have been coached to go through the processes, and in the process, they keep on getting whatever information to monitor what is happening, and, and so forth. A colleague of mine said um, he, 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 got, he got shocked when um, he, he went to the RDC's office, uh, on a particular day, he found his lay reader going to the RDC's office to give security briefs. And when this lay reader showed him, he took off. <laughs> and he said, hey, I didn't know that this person <laughs> has been working like this. He did yes. not tell me. Yes. So as a human being, he has, he has his own opinion. And as the leader, as the archbishop, you may not know. But when the thing gets your ear, you, of course, you have to, you have to talk. And I suppose before he came openly to talk to the nation, he must have talked to, to the clergy. And, and, and maybe some of them have proved adamant. And yeah, that's gentlemen. why he came up. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amar. My guests tonight are Honorable Ibrahim Semujunganda, Kano Shaban Bantariza, Mr. David Pulkol, and Reverend Dr. Andrew David Omona. And we're discussing... The relationship, between, the relationship between the church or religious institutions and the state. Ibrahim, now, moving forward, should, by coming up, uh, Archbishop Luanga, saying what he had gathered, that, saying what he had seen, uh, he believes maybe his priests were recruited, does that safeguard him? Does that make the situation better? Or it creates a big rift now between the state and the church. You see, the, the moment you lose the trust, um, it's one of the most difficult things to recover. And that's why 1998, 99, maybe 2000, Uganda fights with Rwanda and Kisangani. There are processes to repair relationships. Maybe relationships are repaired. You saw what happened recently and many other things that uh, we may not have seen. So the moment you lose trust, uh, there are many things that are going to happen. Even the innocent things are going to be seen as deliberate attempts. And I, I have a feeling that's where we are now between the state and the church. Um, first of all, by the president being a guest of honor almost at all the church functions and donating. I remember I had a discussion with one of Zindana, and his view was that uh, if you are going to give uh, bishops vehicles, let it be institutional and every bishop must benefit. You don't go and handpick and give some and leave the others. 
if you are going to give vehicles to religious leaders, maybe you starting at a district level, but the person was deliberate. So you go give your vehicle, give your money, give your... Uh, and and it, wasn't, it wasn't out of goodwill, but it was just to recruit and, and compromise the church. Uh, so they don't speak. I remember one time when we had a very controversial discussion regarding MPs' vehicles. The Honorable Moses Sari in his area, when the priest spoke about it, he said, but even you, you have it. You don't even do government work, but you have a vehicle. Why do you criticize MPs who are doing government work? So the, <coughs> the president has attempted all through to build a relationship uh, patronize the church the same way as patronize many other institutions. But the Catholic church is too big to swallow. I think that's where he, uh, maybe he made a mistake. And probably because you can't swallow the whole of the Catholic church, you now begin recruiting and creating power centers within it. Um, make priests to be part of your church organization. Of course, you give them money. A lot of, I think now our classified expenditure is more than 600 billion shilling a year. So there will be money to keep giving to these priests and their job, I think that's what makes the, the, the Archbishop angry, is not to file two reports, but it's just to keep fabricating stories such that you are at conflict within yourself. So the solution for me, uh, um, I fear for this country, to, uh, because of two things, one I mentioned earlier, that uh, when you have a very strong leader, strong man in power for all these years, he patronizes all the institutions, he undermines most of the institutions, the day he leaves you in trouble as a country because you will collapse. Uh, but also, when you have uh, key non-state actors almost clashing with the state at a certain stage, um, you don't know where it will end. You don't know who will take advantage of it. Because in 1980, Museveni's group was the last in elections. They were the first in the bush to fight uh, protesting against the results. And Never convince yourself that this country has produced only 107 or uh, uh, Brantarisa. There will be others. So you don't want the state to create uh, uh, conditions that will destabilize the whole country. Um, I have appealed to everybody who can speak to those who are in power. I have made this appeal many times. Please speak to them. Maybe you can have a situation like it was in Ghana when Rowling decided to have some discussions and eventually. Uh, he gives up power. But the moment you continue on the same, you want, you want to hold on to power, uh, you want to undermine political parties, you want to undermine uh, cultural institutions, see what is happening in, in Busoga. The other day I saw the minister, Namuganza, with uh, more than 10 soldiers. She's, gone, she's going around, you have people demonstrating, and all these things you will see the, 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 the hand of the state. So each group, uh, like it was here in Uganda, like it was in, in Missouri, like it has been everywhere. Each group will have state protection and state patronage, and then they can crash. And I think it is deliberate. So th that's what the church is facing now. And by the time the Archbishop, um, the, the, the Catholic Church is, I think, some of the most sophisticated institutions. And they never speak uh, direct as he did. They usually make statements, and it's up to you to go and interpret but when he comes out to speak the way he did, I think this was at the boiling point. Colonel Bantariza, we have a, a tumultuous past. Mm. In the 70s, we had an archbishop who died in a manner that was unbecoming or not even understood well, though later we got to know that he could have been eliminated by the state. His statue stands in, at Westminster Church, I think, somewhere in London. I'm talking about Archbishop Lumu. When an archbishop speaks, and when you look at our history, this scares. True. Uh, and that's exactly why I said here, if I had been the Archbishop, I, I don't know whether he has had previous interactions with the head of state. But if I had been the Archbishop, because you see the Archbishop's statements have the effect of worrying everybody, have the effect of taking us back to the history we're talking about. Okay? And as a leader at that level, he ought to, with due respect, he ought to have avoided making that statement at the pulpit on Easter Day. Perhaps he should, if he has tried so many times to reach the head of state who is the consumer of the intelligence, the intelligence that was now passed on, passed on to, the, to, to the Archbishop, uh, if he has failed, 
Then he could even say, I have tried to reach the president to give him information about the false information he gets. But you see, as for now, we, and I, like I said from the beginning, we need to separate the questions that the, 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 the Archbishop has raised. Because we need to find out, even himself, like he says, we need to find out who is this who informed him, what is his reliability. But again, you see, the, the, the Archbishop is concerned that his own clerics, members of his house, okay, are serving the state. I do not know whether he's finding out right just now, because, by the way, doing intelligence is not just the state of Uganda. I can assure you, a member of the church, even the Vatican knows what happens in Urubaga at the individual level. Every day basis. So every organization always is interested in knowing for good reasons. So this is an admission that, yes, the state is no, a good No, no, not at all. Not at all. So the admission, I'm telling you that if it were happening, okay, the, 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 the <coughs> archbishop, if it were happening and he put it is happening, he ought to have expected it. Because it's not even happening to him, if it were true, it would not be happening to him from the, from the secular state alone. But even from the religious state, it happens. Now, what, the, what is the most important here is him as the church leader here. And what I am even concerned about myself is those who brought him that information, he has created a situation where now even impersonators okay, can come and directly harm him. He could be a hostage tomorrow, right? Like Cardinal Amara was. And he has opened up his vulnerability publicly. Okay, which, so you the, you, which you shouldn't have done. David, you have something to say? Yeah, it's Easter time. Was the right time for the Archbishop to speak this thing. That's when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. For you to get that story very rightly and vividly, that even now in the church, so certain Judas Iscariots are being recruited, coached, even armed. In the church, you're dining with them. I, I'm, I, you're dining with them. So, 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 to me, that uh, as to whether he should have raised it uh, during that time or not, I, I think is immaterial for me. For me, it is teaching the the, the, the Christians. It is uh, they have just had the procession of the cross. They have just had uh, you know. So it is, it fits in very well. But now the question then is, uh, like Semujunganda uh, said. It looks like all the fingers are pointing at government. That there's something, this government, I don't know at what level, is it intelligence level, is it the police, is the president aware or is not aware. It looks like certain people are doing a job in a very clumsy way and they are, and, and, uh, and they are going... Uh, they, they are going too far. You, you keep saying uh, and, uh, doing a job. Okay, what is the clinical you know, way of, 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 of using them in you the church? You see, what, what, what is you the see for example, region? for example, why do you create enemies where they are now? I mean, why don't you spend that money to find out those who have killed women in uh, Tebe, in Wakiso, uh, in the Greater Massacre, and so forth? Why do you waste such resources, manpower, uh, spying equipment, risk money, what? On the, an archbishop, on the clergy, and then you leave the job of crime of establishing who did this, okay? And then you are seeing it, it smells badly that people come in the numberless cars and park there. What are you trying to show? I mean, what are you trying to prove? So, even if you're an intelligence officer, that's what makes me doubt that a real intelligence officer doesn't do his work like that, doesn't blow the cup, doesn't do this. So, to me, the heads of intelligence need to come together whoever is authorizing any such operations and spending uganda taxpayers money uganda's expertise is trained intelligence people to do this thing on bishops i think that must be stopped that's what i'm saying i'm in, uh, one i was happy that uh, when i commented on this last sunday the president has since talked to the to the bishop i'm glad that the inspector general of police is reported to have gone to have a discussion with the archbishop, that's healthy. That's what it should be. Now, for Bantalista to say that, uh, Colonel, to say that the, the, the archbishop should just walk to the president, my friend, you don't just walk like that. But if the president invites you to his meeting, you will go. No, the but archbishop you cannot invite. Him. Him. And he has done that uh, before. Uh, listen, uh, if, if, if the, so in order to raise concern 
and to let the attention of the president. He has to inform the country, he has to inform the late, he has to inform the, the, the Christians. What are the effects? Now, the effects are, it doesn't stop government to do its job. The fact that he has spoken to his Christians. You still remain the president of Uganda, you still remain the DG of internal security, external security, you still remain the inspector general of police to do your job. So he's actually inviting you to say whoever is doing this, exposure is very important. Okay. Now, now, now what I want them to say is that are there reasons for this government to target the church? In my view, yes. Uh, I'm going to speak both. Uh, whether is government really involved? Is government not involved? So I want to say from the scenario that government is involved is that yes, if you look at 2015, 2016. Kale Leaks, you can Google it tomorrow. You can even now, you can get all those newspapers, Kale Leaks, those tapes. The voice of Kale Kaihura, Inspector General of Police, coaching people to say that uh, that as Bishop Luanga uh, had recruited them to campaign for Mbabasi. It's there. It's on the internet. You can get it. So, so it's not the first time. Why would one want this to, to implicate the Archbishop? Uh, you know, uh, if you remember those leaks with uh, Jacqueline Babasi and so forth, uh, and then they, they said, uh, what did they say about, uh, ab ab about the leaks? Oh, yes, they were police leaks, uh, they were stolen. Uh, okay, uh, they, they, and I think some police officer was either interdicted or some arrested or something like that. But where did that story go? Now, so it's not the first time that the government is trying to break down the strong pillar of the Catholic Church. We have seen them, what they have done, what government has done among Muslims. Totally divided. Others are grabbing property, others are what, and so forth. So now you see what the Church of Uganda is, uh, what they have been able to do to the born again churches in terms of uh, turning them as, uh, as uh, voters' banks uh, at elections. Uh, and, uh, and you see what they have done with uh, trying to give uh, ionishes to these uh, priests. Uh, you don't give this one in East Lango, West Lango. Uh, diocese, the diocese, the church, the, 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 the bishop of uh, Lango Diocese had to uh, complain to the president uh, uh, about this, that what are you doing with my priests? Just because they are trying to interfere with the election of a, pre, of a bishop for West Lango. So uh, these things happen. Now, if, you are now, if now the Catholic Church is now being targeted uh, uh, and, uh, and the strong uh, voice of the Catholic Church is being targeted this way, then exposure helps the country to discuss this matter and also helps the president to weigh in on whoever is involved. Doctor, uh, Reverend, and I think the president should weigh in. Reverend, yeah. Reverend, I can Reverend share my Mano. personal okay. story, mm -hmm. how they wanted me killed in 204. Briefly. Yes. And how I had to, uh, 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 when I got the evidence, I made noise. Uh, and then the president called me. Uh, and when I shared with, with him, he was concerned that very night. He summoned all the heads of intelligence uh, and told Amelia, call all of them. And they came there. Say, this poor call, you are, uh, you are, you are, you are, you are running around. He, he told them uh, and, and also shared with them what I had done in the past. So why would somebody target poor call? I would have died before you may. I would have died. But what the president had to do was to dictate a letter there and then and tell these people that you bring me intelligence about protocol, I'll just tell like this, you don't know what you are doing. Uh, and uh, he, he, he was able to give me uh, my pistol, he was able to give me my gun, he was able to tell me to choose any two uh, escorts at that time. This was 204. I'd just fallen out in 203. And some people thought that the best way was to kill protocol so that you destroy evidence. They did not know how I would use what I knew. But of course, I, I know, I, 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 I know. Uh, which area to reach, which area not to reach. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and by now, uh, the president had to weigh in on those people. Of course, I've since given back uh, the, the, the equipment. You know, I was explaining. No, 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 no. no, no. When, I went back, <laughs> when I went to UPC, I think it was just too much for the president. So I was asked to, to surrender all those things. It was good for me because if I also get too used to being escorted uh, in the retirement, and having a gun in retirement, yes, I could apply for a Lancet's gun and, and, uh, yeah. and so forth. But uh, of course, they're also spying on me, so there's, it's a double way. Okay. But, but for me, I have had to. That's how the president saved my life. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I think so you have to make noise in other words. Oh, yes, and then he should just do the same for the Archbishop. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the clergy. Reverend it, it should really yes. weigh in on these people so that they stop wasting our resources on making enemies where they are none. Reverend Dr. Mona, when yeah. the Archbishop speaks like he did, mm. and that people could be recruited, are uh, getting recruited in the church, mm -hmm. should we get worried that under those priestly robes you could be having, you could be having guns tucked in? I'm coming to you <laughs> to pray for me, but yet you're having your AK-47 on your waist. Um, yeah, yeah, in, um, in a way, yes, people can get worried. Uh, my colleague here, the the Afendi uh, at time and uh, knows this well. Uh, there are situations that require <coughs> a preemptive approach. Um, uh, coming up, uh, he was uh, saying the the Dutch bishops should have gone to the president. Maybe severally he discussed the same thing and nothing came out. But in a way of coming open like that will also give an alarm to these people who are operating undercover that mm. we know you. Mm. They have been discovered. So whatever you are doing, you mm. think we don't know, but yet we know. Mm. And um, uh, that may make people to think, to look at all clergy as people who are carrying pistols, which may not be the case. There could be some others, as, as, as the Archbishop said, uh, when they went for a funeral, uh, the state agents came and they wanted their pistol and so forth. There could be a few cases where they have pistols. And we, we, if you look at uh, um, uh, history across, across the world, you, you, you get to see that the state has used uh, the church severally to, to do their work um, in Germany. Uh, they, they have been using the church to get uh, security information, like uh, you come for confession, you, you disclose whatever you have done and so forth, yet this person is recording and then the next time uh, you are reported to, to the state and so forth. We, we may not rule that, but that does not mean that every clergy in his role does that, uh, hides a gun. And, and so I, 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 I request that people should be free with the clergy, uh, not to think everybody is a gun-wielding clergy <laughs> and, and they can do anything uh, and, and so forth. And, and also to my seniors, um, um, uh, like the bishops, um, uh, maybe if, if, if there are facts which are on the ground and there are some clergy who are known and they are adamant, there are ways of uh, disciplining clergy I, I, in the churches. So, so all avenues should be uh, should be used to to do, to bring some of these people to to light. But but his coming out openly was was a good thing. Gentlemen, yeah. we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll open the line so that you at you at home can also maybe be a part of this discussion by calling the numbers that will. Be Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Honorable Ibrahim Samuju Nganda, Colonel Shaban Bantariza, Mr. David Pulko, and Reverend Dr. Andrew David Omona. Uh, so, uh, Ibrahim, as, as you, you are a member of parliament, and uh, you, you have seen some religious leaders who have come out to, especially during the, uh, during the, the Constitution Amendment, uh, some members from, of the church, especially... The, Archbishop, the Bishop of Grenzori Diocese, Bishop Kisembo, he came out clear and said, you know what, do not that change the constitution. And that seems to have uh, angered the state in some way. Yes, he did. You see, the clergy are in a privileged position because most of the statements ourselves will make a prejudice, what Hubsimuju have said. Uh, because they are not going to contest for president or for parliament. They should actually be the ones helping. As I said, they, uh, you saw that happen in, in Zambia, in, in Malawi, and they succeeded there. Or even in the they, Kishasha, they seem yeah, to have votes. They came out. The church in Uganda, and I have written many, many times about the church, that they were um, abandoning the, the call. And, and I'm extremely happy that uh, even where they didn't make very strong statements, someone who understands was able to see that they are saying, please, let's not take this road. Um, of course, you may say uh, this, this is part of the, part of the, or the outcome. Um, and uh, as, as David said, uh, if you have a referendum coming, 
you don't know at all will the church play. You don't know whether they, they, will, be, they will continue speaking out. Um, and maybe for the president, if you want to silence them, you start early. Because part of the reason is I think that Bishop or anyone else wouldn't want to go to the president under the circumstances, especially when you know. Remember the story in Uganda that the Kabaka is not paying <coughs> the calls. If you know someone is undermining you, sometimes uh, you may speak, he, he gives you assurances, and then the same things are going to, to happen again. So you get tired and, 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 and you begin acting the way the Archbishop and maybe others have acted before. Um, so the, <coughs> the, the role of the church in Uganda, because you see, uh, I, I have given example, examples of my own constituents. Um, where you go and almost at every village the church is extremely present with institutions, with the schools, and, and, and government is absent. All that is available is either HM and or some, something else. So the, the, the church needs to do much more than actually what it has done, um, especially in a country like ours. The trouble is that you deal with an individual, and I remember telling him when we were uh, on one of radio stations, that uh, when he came in, it used to be Uganda that was a project. Along the way, he became the project. Therefore, everything else that's going to affect him is going to deal with it as if um, the, the, the lives of Ugandans depend entirely on that particular, um, um, particular thing. And that, that's how now he has a 90 billion shilling donation. And we pass it in the budget in Parliament every year. He goes to give bishops uh, money, bishops uh, vehicles, uh, cars. Yeah. So I think. Uh, <coughs> In my own view, um, um, shouldn't, may, shouldn't Christians <laughs> grab the keys of those cars? <laughs> in, in my own view, the church uh, <laughs> also made fundamental <laughs> fundamental mistakes <laughs> when it allowed Mr. Museven to begin patronizing <laughs> um, some of the bishops. So because when you, <laughs> when you begin if complaining about those who are recruited and, and, and are armed, you should also speak against those who are receiving gifts from the state. Because the Catholic Church is in a position to provide for its own clergy. But you make them vulnerable by allowing them. Because individually you will see at all the functions, uh, of, 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 of most of the functions of the church, they will want to invite government. Because uh, if they are poor people, I can understand. But the Catholic Church is not, it's not a poor institution. So the, the relationship between the, the, the church and the state, um, if you don't watch carefully, then you're going to be in trouble. The man who has been giving you his cars uh, and, and money, you begin criticizing, he's going to be very angry. And, uh, and I ask the church to insulate itself from, um, by refusing to accept. If there are institutional gifts, the president goes to Namugongo, he makes a contribution as a head of state. That's understandable. But if all of you are clamoring to invite him as a guest of honor at your consecration and he's giving you vehicles and you're accepting them and it becomes part of the reason you're inviting him to another place, then you'll have a very reason to come and, 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 and have a face off with you. So I think the church needs to protect itself. If you're going to speak against the excesses of the state, you must not be beneficial. I remember one time when the president uh, gave uh, NAD's money to the Uganda government that they should go and do mobilization. I opposed it. I said, you see, this is NAD's money. It is not his money. The moment you accept the president to give you NAD's money, then tomorrow you can't criticize him for giving Bataliza money for, for drugs. So that's what the church needs to do now, moving forward, to insulate Dr. itself. Dr. Mona, has, have the church leaders lost the moral authority now to be critical of government, uh, to check on the government excesses because they have allowed to be used the way uh, Ibrahim is, is stating? Uh, uh, no, no, not really. Um, uh, the, the church leaders have not uh, lost the moral authority. Uh, though uh, in situations where uh, what, what is contentious here is that um, when the church praises the state, the state does not say you are involving yourself in politics. Because in, on several occasions when the president goes for a function, he say, oh, you have done well and so forth. When he follows talking, he does not say you should not have said that because you are religious leaders and you should not involve in politics. But when a church leader stands up and says something that is affecting the, the, the state, the country as... as as, 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 as a citizen, uh, he becomes a religious leader and he should not talk. And, and I think, um, uh, though, yes, uh, when, when some of these cars or vehicles are given, uh, maybe the intention is to make people keep quiet. 
but, but I think that should not have been the case. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if the president gave these gifts as individual, an individual, like he goes to his farm, he gives you a cow, that is a, a gift from the president to you as a person. But when he uses state coffers to give a vehicle to a person, he is having the right to distribute resources mm. to the country. Good intention. And, and if, if I receive a car paid for by the, uh, state. Paid for by the state, not, not mm. though given by the president, but using state coffers, funds, it should not have been a reason for me to keep quiet. I should remain with my voice, and whenever I talk, my talks should not be misunderstood whether right or wrong. Yeah, uh, <coughs> I think we let's look at it this way. To say that uh, I think let the citizens come into this debate. Uh, let citizens, let the church members be concerned that their church leaders or religious leaders are under some form of unexplained attack. And therefore there should be more voices coming out and to cushion the clergy so that those who are involved can start to cow down and stop this unhealthy thing. Secondly, so that the president and his team can start to prevail on those Iran officers who may be doing this thing without the knowledge of the, 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 the appointing authority, or even if the appointing authority knows... That's what you believe, uh, they now, can if, do that on their own. Uh, even <laughs> if the appointing authority knows... <laughs> then he should weigh down on... By the way, being a president is a very, very difficult job. I have been a director general for intelligence. You are there waiting to brief the president, and your colleagues are coming out after briefing him, and someone is pulling you aside and saying, Mr. Pulkol, if the president asks you this, you tell him this. If the president asks you this, you say this. And I say, no. I have the evidence I have here is to the contrary. <laughs> say, you carry Mojong, what's wrong with you? But Am I in this job as a Karim <laughs> job? I'm a director general. So, 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 so you see how vulnerable a president is. Because, before, because they are there with the president for two hours, and then... And, they, and they, that's what exactly what the bishop seen, said, that the institutions... Their scene of crime... The problem with the institutions. Yes, their scene of crime is far away from state house. The president may not get to know every detail. So, and yet when they are with him, they are his best. They can afford to pretend and say, tell the president everything he, he, wants, he wants to hear. And then they go and do another thing. That, I, I know how presidents are vulnerable. There are moments like the president would ask me, what do you want to do me, me to do now? Those were dangerous moments for me. I would breathe heavily because now you're about to make the president make mistakes. Sometimes I would say, but we have three days, Mr. President, to act on this. So let's sleep over it and come back to it. Sometimes you look on the roof for a solution. Sometimes you do what? But sometimes you see him trying to maximize options you have given, try to come with some hybrid option. It's not an easy thing being a president. It's not easy. So, so, me, so it's possible that some of the people are doing these errand jobs uh, in a very bad way and now bringing the government in disrepute. So it's upon government now to repair its image and start to act, do the right thing. And that's why I'm asking the president that, look, please fix this within this coming week. Let me, uh, let me uh, open uh, the lines so that Ugandans yeah. are watching this show <laughs> tonight. If I was, they can, uh, you can, you can tell it. us what they think <laughs> yeah. uh, about this relationship between the church and the state. And probably have also listened to my panelists. What do you make of their contributions on the show tonight? So I'll be taking the very first caller online. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, I'm by the name of Peter Kasule. Kasule. Yeah, I'm calling from uh, Baganto. Okay. Go right ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Uh, the church, when we look at this history, and we try to compare most of the countries, that, most, of, most of the states that have gone down, have gone down because of the, uh, because of the state, getting involved with uh, the issues of the church. Uh, what I'm kind of requesting those people, like the NRM government, they know the way that the, the loopholes they used to snatch the government, the, uh, the other government. First of all, they used the church. 
So they have a deep fear that the church will also act against them. That is where the fear is coming from. Okay. Thank you very much. Because of their, their historic engagement with the church, so they think the same means can be used uh, against them now. Let me take another call online. Hello. 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 I think I'll have to drop that line and take another because you left your... Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Mr. Kamara. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Reverend, Reverend uh, James uh, Mwetsije. Okay. Um, are you hearing me now? Yes, I am. But what you have done, I suppose, is that you have left your TV uh, volume up. If you, turn it, if you turn it down, it will not send an echo, and then the conversation will be okay. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank you for this debate. Um, are you hearing me? Go ahead. We are hearing you loud and clear, Reverend Mwesije. I want to thank you for this debate. I want to assure the public those who are listening, those who are debating, that what exactly happened uh, at the anonymous letter to Archbishop Rwanga is not something to worry about. You have seen what has happened in New York, where the bishop was preaching, exactly what happened in Namrembe Diocese with Bishop Luarira. These are incidents which may be personal. You cannot rule it out. And even the opposition, like Mr. Semuju, who is here, because for him he discusses anything that is bad or good in relation to everything in past world. So the opposition even can use this to actually pose that kind of name so that the image of government is tarnished. Other, other actors could also do the same. Let me ask, uh, the, uh, the, 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 if I may ask, am I speaking to Reverend Mwesiji, who is a presidential advisor? No. Sorry? This is James. This is James. Okay. So I want to tell you, sir, mm -hmm. that uh, even Mr. Pokor, when he said that, uh, that uh, Lokodo was uh, defrocked, I, I don't know if he witnessed the defrocking. Because those are speculations. In fact, the media relies on speculation. They, they, they do harm to the public by misinforming them and amplifying something that is small and making it big. It is very true that, as, 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 uh, as Bantariza is saying, actually, when any religious leader is having a challenge, it is better for him to inform the government operatives or even like at archbishop level to inform the president and then an action is taken. But it doesn't mean that because there were anonymous letters written threatening the archbishop, therefore the government is against the church. And I want to tell you that we, for 30 years that NRM has been in power, the relationship between the church and the state has been so positive, and it will remain positive until cows come back home, because there is no scenario to show that the church Churches or religious leaders are, 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 are actually a problem. The Kisembo issue we are talking in Sototo. Can't be a leader and you stand before the people when the president is visiting the fountain of honor and you tell the president, for the sake of your life and for the sake of, of your family, you better prepare for a school fight. As if the president's life was, 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 was threatened or as if the president's family was threatened. If he had something to share, should have created a situation like recently you saw the religious leaders, the Archbishop Mutagari, the Mufuti visiting the, the President himself and set out. They took their opinion, he discussed with them, they came out when they were happy. And and that is the procedure, but not putting things in public that they, they, they that for the sake of your family, for the sake of your of your of your of your, of your life, as if the president's life or president's family has. so the way even religious leaders should uh, against negative issues that they see in government, they should actually approach it in a manner that does not create uh, that does not create hiccups or okay. misunderstanding.
All right. So I want to say that there is no threat against religious leaders. You are, they are, they are only <laughs> using a smoke screen. Okay. And Okay. Orthodox is talking. Th th Everybody is talking, Chief. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I'll give you much more time because you told me you're a reverend. And uh, since uh, we are discussing the relationship between the church and the state, I thought it was important that we listen to you more. And thank you for your submissions. And yes, let me pick two more and then my panelists will conclude on this, uh, reacting to your questions or maybe your submissions. I have another call online. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'm going to drop that line and pick another. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from, sir? I'm calling from NASA and this is Uma. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Okay, good evening, sir. <coughs> good evening. I hope the government has all the right to spy in an institution or in a person. Because... You know, churches are not easy with, with governments. A member of Napoleon, imprisoned the Pope. So, I think maybe those who were spying, they did it in a, a way that they were not professional. They are not, they were not, supposed, to, they were not supposed to be seen or to be known. According Otherwise, to David Polkow, they, they, they seem well, the clumsy. That's a trade. Uh, that's a trade. Uh, <laughs> Blow your cover, you cannot be useful to anybody, not even to the state. You just mess up the... Actually, you, you, you put even the president that... Uh, uh, you put the country in, a, in such a difficult situation. Okay. And yet it's not policy. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, my producer is telling me there's one more caller we can pick, and then uh, maybe you, you can... I have a call online. Hello. Yes, hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Tony. I'm calling from Nigeria. I'm sorry? I'm also named calling from Nigeria. All right. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, now, uh, good evening. Uh, if Mr. Semiju speaks uh, wrongly uh, about government uh, or about the state in that matter, it is understood because, you know, he's a politician. If uh, Mr. Shaban Bantariza says, uh, speaks ill of, of the opposition, it's understood because that's his position. But if a clergy speaks, only speaks bad things or the negative against the state, then he's inviting in suspicion, in my opinion. So if you're a clergyman, you should insist on truth. I'm not saying you shouldn't be speaking about politics. It's okay for you to be talking about politics, but be truthful. <laughs> if you tell us that government is not doing certain things yeah. right, then applaud the good things that have been done. But some clergy only will insist on a particular line, which, in my opinion, would justify the state coming in or being suspicious. Thank you. That's my opinion. Thank you very much, a caller there from Luzira. Okay. Um, you have listened to some of the callers. You have, I'm sure, some views you, you, you could make out of that, but also your concluding remarks, beginning with you, Honorable Ibrahim. Um, <clears throat> I think I want to repeat uh, what I said uh, during this show. Um, that you pray that uh, in this quest for power, for life presidency, uh, by the time we overcome it, the state has not corrupted. That there are some pillars of the state that remain standing. Because otherwise, elsewhere, um, the life presidency has always corrupted with the state. Um, and, and usually people in power want to pick the good examples. Some areas it work, it didn't, it didn't corrupt. Because the by patronizing each and everybody, um, you you undermining the state itself. So m my own understanding of what that bishop said is not so much of what they say about him, but the attempt to undermine the state. Um, we've complained in Uganda here the attempt to undermine the monarch. It happens almost it has happened to each and every uh, and every institution, including the military. The military is also is undermined the same way the church is undermined. When Teresa here will tell you. I don't think the UPDF has ever had a discussion in the officers' mess. Instead, they end up being a prison for Tumukundi. In other armies, senior officers will go and further discuss. In UPDF, it is a taboo. The moment you are two, three of them every day, you are inviting suspicion. Like someone said uh, that if the church discusses uh, the state, you are inviting. So the ordinary things that happen that strengthen institutions are deliberately undermined and they are lacking. 
Uh, I don't want to be like Prokoro, who is very positive, inviting the president to come and solve the problem. I actually think he's the trouble shooter. But he has not been discovered. He's been exposed. <coughs> if he's um, maybe we, we can only continue appealing to him, not to continue doing these things. Because this so intelligence will report to him. Yeah, so, uh, so I, 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 I am hesitant to invite him to come and solve <laughs> this because uh, my, my own suspicion is that he's behind it and he does these things <laughs> fairly well. When the, the <coughs> members of the real family came to denounce the Kabaka of Uganda, they acted as if they were doing it on their own. Until when we saw General Sari giving them uh, soldiers to go and protect them at Kasubi, then we knew that this was no longer a matter of the real family, it was a matter of the state. Mm. And I think for me that's the point that the Archbishop makes. Please don't undermine the church. We are also uh, of use to the, to, the, to the public. It's not a small, small thing that they have filed reports about him. Shaban, you're parting short. <coughs> As we conclude, uh, I would like to advise all leaders at all levels that we must find a way of handling whatever disagreements, whether they are political, whether they are sexual or otherwise, in a way that would not alarm those that we lead, it's not a very wise thing to do. When you hear of a state, the state has secrets. Those secrets could be spilled over to, to, to the public. If they were, we wouldn't all know where to run to. So it's not very good to alarm the people. Now, but also, our leaders at different levels, like the church, like our, our, our archbishops and other bishops and other clerics, even Dr. Manahir, Reverend, he shouldn't be harmed as he goes home by any, anybody pretending to be a state agent or a state actor. Mm. And so uh, the, the, the state has a, a responsibility of ensuring that actually it listens into what happens around us, not for negative purposes of hunting you down, wanting to hunt the church or to do whatever, whatever the situation, but to ensure that because those who, who kidnap others, many times they come from the community. They are not from, from abroad. So, the, 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 our Archbishop, for example, what the, the, message, the message he was giving, that the president is being misled by CMI, by ESO, by ESO, uh, is good, if that's true. But now the better thing is, I would like that the Archbishop to deliver what is actually true, okay, uh, versus the untruth that the agencies are saying to the president, and they can only share that between themselves. We don't even need to know. So then the president can take action, and when he takes action, we won't even be able to know why he has chopped Shabana's head or anybody else's head, okay, whether it is related to the archbishop threat or not. Then, for, then lastly, I am pleased personally to, to see that the president, first of all, has taken the right way to engage the archbishop himself, and, and, and then the, the, the IGP has gone in, he's going to give them the security they need, okay, so then tomorrow, now we have we are we are through with 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 the, with, the, with the Easter. So then on Matters Day at the, at the Namugongo the shrine, there is no other bombshell from uh, f from our our uh, our archbishops about another security threat, because that does not take the country anywhere. We all live in fear. What harms the the, the, the archbishop halfway harms me completely. Okay, Doctor Bona. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I, I think uh, in this, um, I, I would like to say that uh, we are all stakeholders as Ugandans. And, and so uh, things that affect us as a people should be everyone's concern. Um, there are some colleagues who called and they said um, a, a, a clergy have to ask to tell the truth. But at times in some of these scenarios, you may say truth can be relative. Because um, the, the Archbishop came up with the truth, which is not somebody's truth. Mm. In convincing truth. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so, um, and you're proven true. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I mean, if a gun was recovered. So, so you, <laughs> we, we, we are all armed so, by law. All of us. Yeah, you, you, you can't understand who is speaking the truth here. Uh, when you are speaking the truth and somebody is saying you are not speaking the truth. And, and then I think um, as, as, as citizens of the country, uh, we, we are the, 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 the principle of co social contract applies here, that we have given our rights to the state, but the state should not abuse our rights okay. as, as a people. And as, 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 as uh, church leaders, we should be given our freedom to talk on matters that affect the country and, and that affect the security David, of the country.
Yeah, three things. One is that uh, <coughs> now that this has come to light and it is now known everywhere, it's on our newspapers, on our television, citizens have heard. So please let those who are responsible for our security. Uh, you've seen Rubaga has become a scene of, and then you've seen Namirembe, another scene of. So before we see other scenes of targeting our clerics, please move in and uh, and put to an end this kind of thing whoever is doing it and that's why i'm moving asking or stop it I, i'm saying moving to stop it of course so that it, it doesn't continue that's why i'm asking if it takes another week before the president has intervened then me i will now conclude that maybe he's involved because <laughs> if if he did not know then he does not know but now that he knows then certainly we expect something to be done because otherwise it cannot be of no consequence so then we'll be able to interpret what that means if there's no action. Because doing nothing has consequences uh, and doing something also has consequences. So that's why then we are asking those who are responsible so, so, so to, to bring this together. I've just told you my own personal experience, how the president then had to weigh in. Because I had to ask the president, have you really decided to take away my life when I saved yours? Okay? Uh, not once, not twice. Okay? Three times. So then he, he, he asked me, like, what? Then when I showed him, he, I, I saw him take action. But if I had not made noise in 204, uh, maybe I would have died. But the fact that I took that route and he called me and the problem was fixed. That's why I'm asking that this thing is simple to fix. Okay. Then three is that uh, if the purpose is to undermine and divide the church, because we have seen Reverend Father Who, you remember Namugongo uh, church there, uh, okay? Uh, who has broken away or broke away, have they reconciled? I've seen him escorted by soldiers. I see him, you know, saying things against the archbishop. I've seen... So this type of thing does not augur very well for the state to be involved in such squabbles because already their cultural institutions are suffering because you promote a major to a lieutenant colonel and make him a cultural leader of the Bamba. You promote a captain, uh, Chimeze, to, from a captain in return. All these are in retirement to now a major and make him a, a, a cultural institution head of what in Kayunga? O okay. Now, uh, you promote who? So are we going to see, th that's why then we're asking you PDF, what do you want from these uh, cultural institutions? Are we also going to see a retired uh, army general as archbishop? So where will it stop? This type of interference must stop. Thank you very much. David Polkoro, Reverend Dr. Andrew Omona, Colonel Shaban Bantariza and... Uh, Honorable Ibrahim Samujunanda and all of you who have been a part of this. Good night and God bless Uganda.